I will introduce Dr. Marisa Escobar, our next presenter. Um, she is affiliated with, uh, also with um, SEI's uh, U.S. Center. I really can't do two things at once. Um, so I won't try. Um, and also uh, earned a Ph.D. in hydrology at Cal Davis. Um, her work focuses on the linkages between physical and socio-ecological processes and systems and with a geographic focus thus far on Latin America and California. And in these venues, she's done a lot of work on the energy, food, water nexus and, and the role of hydropower in sustainable development. Um, Dr. Escobar's presentation today is titled Scenario-Based Approach to Define E-Flows, Environmental Flows, uh, under Hydropower Development um, in Alto Magdalena, Colombia. So, Dr. Escobar, please. Thank you, and let's see. Um, first, thanks everybody for being here and to the organizers of this session. Um, it's, it's very important for us to, to share what we do and to have uh, an opportunity to uh, hear input from other partners on this. Uh, I changed a little bit the title um, to be more catchy and to learn to communicate better what we do. <laughs> Finding the flow, examining hydropower <coughs> development in Colombia. And uh, this is work that we are doing with Jack Siever, which is the weed developer. He's located in Boston. Uh, David Porky, and we are working in collaboration with uh, the Nature Conservancy, uh, the global um, group that uh, does a lot of conservation efforts. Uh, we are working with the Colombia team, uh, Hector Angarita and Juliana Delgado. And this is work that's being funded by USAID Colombia. And uh, this is just a portion of a larger project that we have with them in Colombia. And I'm sorry this is in Spanish, but I think you get the idea. It's a stream flow in the y-axis, time on the x-axis. And you see the flow, how it fluctuates throughout the year. And the idea of this image is to show how the species have adapted throughout, the, throughout their evolution to these flows. And their life stages um, are also adapted to those um, flows. Uh, for, for example, fish uh, in low flows do their spawning processes and so on and so forth. So um, the, once there's some alteration of the flow, of course, these species and ecosystems uh, don't have the capacity to adapt to that. So um, it's very hard for them to keep going with these conditions. This is the red. Um, hydrograph is with hydropower after a, a dam has, has been put in place. So if flows is really water that needs to be delivered to uh, meet these environmental requirements. And it needs to consider the different flow components, the magnitude, the duration of those flows, the timing when those flows happen, the rate of change and the frequency in which they happen. And putting in, in better words, a, a famous Californian fish biologist says, Hydrographs show the pulse of the river to which species have evolved over millennia. So the problem is how do we start defining inflows? Uh, IHAs is one way in which can do, we can do that. IHAs mean indices of hydrologic alteration, which are statistics, about 60, 70 different statistics that characterize the complexity of those flows. And they can help characterize hydrographs. And they, can be, they have been mostly promoted by TNC, the Nature Conservancy, in a software package. And the IHAs help identify, identify flow components that have been altered with these type of alterations like hydro power dams. Um, what is not really being addressed with IHAs is the contextualized problem within the context of the watershed. And what we bring with our project is try to address some of the context through the use of WIP and uh, applying these in this um, upper Magdalena Basin. And put it by another famous Californian scientist, uh, maybe we cannot really have the river as it was because of all the other uses, but at least we may be able to have a scaled down, down version, sort of like a mini-me, he calls it. So we really put it all together, and many of you no WIP, <laughs> and um, this is the interface, and I'm trying to represent here all that context is really, that's really not um, 
taking into account but these other methodologies that address e-flows. So, sorry. So we have the hydropower. He's, here, here is the, one of the dams that is in the place where, where we have our case study. We have households, and probably some of these words resonate a lot with some of you because some of us, some of you work more on, on energy, some of you work more on households, uh, some on agriculture. And downstream, the last thought is what do we do in terms of environmental flows? And many times that's not being considered. And of course, all the governance aspects, these are some partners that we are working with, trying to identify how do we relate to each other and to the problem of water and how to interconnect. So basically the governance aspects of, his, of it, and this is when I think most about Mons governance. And um, as other famous California has said, WIP has changed my life. And that's <laughs> David Perkey. And um, certainly he's very passionate about WIP, but uh, I think not, not so extreme for the 13,000 users, users of WIP, but I'm sure uh, this tool has been very useful to integrate all of these components. This is a case study in the upper Magdalena Basin. This is Colombia in the upper left. And the basin, the main, ba main basin with, where most of the population is located, uh, is called the Magdalena. And the case study is located in the lower part where I put the red circle. And that's where most of the hydropower development is being pushed because there's a lot of water, there are big slopes, so great opportunity for energy development. Of course, this case study shows the contradictions of the nexus. Uh, this larger basin versus watershed scale analysis, the national energy planning versus the local water planning, the hydropower versus fish, the energy versus water in general. And that's uh, what some of our um, researchers in SEI are also trying to address, how to link and how to understand these contradictions uh, using our tools, WIP and LIP. So in reality, what we are doing, going back to the e-flows, is trying to do this software marriage, trying to integrate WIP. This is the case study already into WIP. And uh, the, big, the big blue, um, um, thing there is the is the dam, and um, of course that that is what has been altering the flows downstream. And uh, Jack Siever has been working a lot on this, trying to integrate the statistics into WIP. And uh, of course, as he's always done, he's very focused on the user of the tool to make it as clear as possible and as transparent as possible, integrating a lot of complexity, uh, making it in a simpler way. And this is one of the results we have. And um, just uh, um, there's a lot going on here. It's just to give you a flavor of the type of results that we are getting from this type of analysis. Red means that the low values of a flow component has been, have the frequency of those low values has been reduced. Um, the green means the middle range of the flows, have, the frequency has, been, has changed. And yellow means that the high values of that flow component has been increased, the frequency. So uh, just showing, focusing on the first of the indicators that shows the magnitude of the January flows, you can see how here very simply and very graphically, we can see the decrease in the frequency of the low and middle range and the increase of the high range. So basically, we're putting more water in the river than it was before. So that's probably, of course, affecting the fish or the ecosystem in general downstream. And I just want to leave a few talking points. The use of WIP and IHA integration for e-flows assessments. We need to keep uh, understanding better how to do this integration. We are trying to connect the dots, urban, agriculture, hydropower, environmental flows. This is improving governance in Colombia, and we hope that it can happen elsewhere. And I'm just going to, going to leave two questions that I hope we can talk about later in these two days. Uh, what to do with the broken or the contradictions in the nexus, and what, what else could this analysis be appropriate? <laughs>